the dream I know Deep up my feelings for you Hello viewers, thank you all so much for joining us on today's news. The headlines, Abuja property owners to start paying taxes. Says by the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Wiki Iensom. Days after this, we have obstacle elections. Clark urges INEC to investigate alleged irregularities. But before we proceed with this news, welcome to Reality Letters, this is your home of news and politics. Thank you all so much for joining us. If this is your first time of watching, please do us a favor to like and subscribe and also the notification bell to get notified when next to drop our video. You can send in your comments and keep the conversation lively in our comment section. To all our amazing subscribers, thank you all so much for joining us. We really do appreciate. To all our viewers right here, feel relaxed, enjoy and stay connected. Properties owners in Abuja should get ready to start paying taxes on their properties as the Minister of Federal Capital Territory, Yanson Wiki, has approved a draft property tax regulation for the city. It was gathered that the Federal Capital Territory Internal Revenue Service had commenced the implementation of capital gains tax in Abuja, as stipulated in the Capital Gains Tax Act 2004. The capital gain tax imposes a tax of 10% on the total amount of chargeable gains after making allowable deduction from the computation of such gain occurring to any person on the disposal of the chargeable asset in a year of assessment. The executive chairman of Federal Capital Territory Internal Revenue Service, Haruna Abdullahi, who disclosed this to the journalist in Abuja on Sunday, also stated that the Capital City Revenue Service had been able to grow its internally generated revenue to about 140 billion naira. Commenting on the measures being put in place by the service to drive revenue for the Federal Capital Territory, Abdullahi said that the minister had approved some key initiative to achieve this. He said in the last three weeks, the minister approved some initiatives that are huge and we certainly changed the dynamics in terms of the bottom line. Just the other day, they submitted a draft proposal to the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory Property Tax Regulation. So the Federal Capital Territory Internal Revenue Service Act empowers the ministers to come up with a property tax regulation for the Federal Capital Territory. So they had a long conversation and they suggested it to the minister. And he asked them to come up with a draft regulation, which they did, and he has approved the initiative. So when they have an entire agency collaboration where they review it because the draft was just done by the Federal Capital Territory Internal Revenue Service. But that is not enough. They need other stakeholders. So he approved the initiative to go ahead and we can review the draft and then came back for it. Subsequently, at the end of the day, he will sign the regulation and is gazetted and implemented. So that alone should tell that there is a huge positive impact on the bottom line of the internal generated revenue in the city. Also, just recently, the ministers inaugurated another committee. They are now implementing the capital gain tax law. Previously, people just voluntarily go and pay. So there is a very little payment in terms of capital gain tax. But now they have briefed the ministers and they have approved the interagency collaboration. So they are going to begin to implement the capital gain tax fully. You can imagine federal capital territory with a property tax, fully implemented capital gain tax. And then about a month ago, there was a circular where the minister approved the implementation of Section 85 of the Personal Income Tax Act and Section 31 of the Federal Capital Territory Internal Revenue Service Act. The Federal Capital Territory Internal Revenue Service Boss noted that when he resumed office two years ago, in his first meeting, he told the staff that he cannot do much if they don't implement Section 85. But it's a huge section that needs political support. All that means is that all of them have a tax clearance certificate and they must file their returns. So you must get a tax clearance certificate. And of course, the minister came and he endorsed that. So you cannot get a building permit before the development control unit can give you the permit to go ahead. You need to show that you are paying your tax and you have a tax clearance certificate and it must be verifiable by the appropriate tax authority. Abdullah stated that these three major initiatives, the implementation of Section 85 of Personal Income Tax and Third One of Federal Capital Territory Internal Revenue Service Act 2015, implementation of capital gain tax, and then now the property tax regulation should take us to certainly above 50 to 60% of what we are doing at the moment. And that is 
a huge positive impact on the bottom line. On whether the service was facing challenges in time of collecting tax in the city, Abdullahi stated that revenue issues were political issues because the agency required the political will of the minister to overcome a lot of challenges. That is why he mentioned the fact that the minister has given them the required political support and that has lessened the burden. Other ones are general operation issues and lack of information in terms of clarity of what happens and what is supposed to happen. They face significant challenges from many stakeholders when they consider the kind of letters they receive, but they try as much as possible to deal with them. Now that the minister has come to show that revenue issues are in the forefront for him, all stakeholders in the city now see that the political will is there and have seen the direction of the administration and they will not joke with it. So guys, let's know your thoughts. Your contributions are in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Moving on to the next one, we have other statesman Edwin Clark has urged the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC to investigate alleged irregularities reported in the Bayasa Imo and Kogi governorship election head on Saturday. Clark made the call when a group sat sat diamond ladies paid him a courtesy visit in Abuja, said alleged discovery of completed resource sheets with names of voters and so on was very unfortunate. Clark, who is also the leader of Pan Ninja Data Forum, said that for INEC to redeem its image from the fallout of the 2023 general election, the commission must investigate alleged irregularities reported in the three states. What happened in the last election was very disappointing because if they say that they are going to use technology, they must use it because you provide it in your guideline and in the electoral law. INEC should redeem its image because without an effect, honesty, INEC they are in trouble because democracy will not work in this country. He also appreciated the group for the visit, advising them to continue to participate in the affairs of the country for the development of Nigeria. Earlier, the president of the group, Victoria Egelege, said the Sasat Diamond Ladies was an association of the Niger Delta women aimed at providing social educational and economic empowerment to women and children. They also aim at safeguarding the rights of the children and provide for the well-being of the children who are exposed to any form of abuse. A Gelege who described Clark as a nation builder with the interests of every Nigeria at heart, irrespective of geopolitical zones, also presented to him a merit award and bestowed upon him the position of grand patron of the group. So guys, let us know your thoughts. Your contributions are in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Let's keep the conversation lively in the comment section. Once again, thank you all so much for staying tuned with us. We really do appreciate it. On this note, we have come to the end of today's segment. Till I come away next. Stay safe, guys. Bye.